What's up guys? So I just dropped Focus 1.1 and it includes two features that I'm going to show you today that are really going to help you enhance your sales pages, landing pages, or really just any page that you want to enhance with imagery or videos or something like this, some visuals, uh, but you also want to make sure your visitors uh, retain focus on your content. Okay, because a lot of times we can introduce visuals and users will get distracted, they get lost in the visuals and they end up leaving the page. Uh, I'm gonna show you two things in Focus 1.1, they're called breakouts and pullouts. And I'm gonna show you how to use these two things to help keep your visitors laser focused on your content so they can complete whatever mission you want them to complete. All right, let's dive in. So here we're looking at my sales page for Focus OmniTweet. And on this page, I thought it would be a good idea to start by showing you what a timeline on your website is going to look like after you install Focus OmniTweet. Um, I did that by inserting an image here after the, the first paragraph, which is supposed to be the hook. And you know, here, here's the way it would look normally. This image is just center aligned here on the page. Now, like I said, this gives uh, users an opportunity to sort of read what's in the image and they might just get lost and bounce from the page. There's nothing to keep them locked into the content on the page, uh, you know, beyond the image itself. So it'd be nice if I could move this image off to the side, leave or, or you know, keep, retain some of the article text to the side of the image and uh, that way they keep flowing down the page. Or the visitors will keep flowing down the page. Now, there's a few ways we can do this with focus, and I'll show you how I used to do it, or a way that I, I've been doing it, and you've had this uh, option available to you since focus came out, but we will just inspect this guy here, and what we'll do is we will extend this thing to the right, okay? So there it is. That pushed this image to the side in an interesting manner and created a choked portion of text here out to the left. This is actually really good for sales and conversions. This is a good setup. This works. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is the balance on the scroll is a little weird. This is like kind of stuffed over here just a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit strange. I mean, you know, it's okay. that I've been running my page like this. I actually like this, uh, but this is not the only way to pull some content out to the side, uh, to pull a visual out to the side of your content, okay? So this arrangement, this is a, an extend to the right. What this does is this uses, fills up the remainder of the usable width of the layout, which here's the usable width of the layout, the full layout. Now our text column is usually only this, shown in blue here. So typically the image would not be able to spill out beyond the blue boundaries on the sides of the page. But because we've extended it, in this case, it pulls out into the orange area, normally dead space, white space, gutter space, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, so it will use some of that, and this uh, opens up room for your content to exist out to the side. This is good. One, one particular reason this is good is that we know when we choke text like this, visitors are really likely to read this text. The reason why is because it looks easy to consume. It looks like you can just rip through this very quickly. Uh, and indeed, that's what visitors will do. They will, they will read choked lines of text like this much more readily than they will read uh, text that, that goes all the way across the page. Now, I limit all of my content to a very readable width and that's, what, that's why this column of text is only so wide, uh, because I know the, the user psychology behind reading, but I also know that introducing these little chokes is also like a ninja way to get people to engage with your content. So I like this arrangement here with the extend to the right, but as, a, as I was playing around with the most recent focus update, I realized there was a couple other ways I could, I could treat this and uh, that provide even more flexibility for sales pages. So I'm gonna show you those now. The first we're gonna look at is called a breakout. So now that we know how the extend to the right works, let's take a look at the breakout. So we will do this. Instead of extend right, we're just gonna break out. And I'll show you how to do this stuff in the editor. I'm just doing it here for now to show you uh, very quickly. So anyway, here's a breakout to the right. Now here's what I love about this. This slams the image all the way over to this edge of the viewing device, the edge of the browser, no matter how wide the browser is, you know, as long as it's wide enough to, to handle this behavior. So that we're thinking desktop clients, laptops, things like this. 
So the breakout breaks the image out of the, 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 the overall layout. Remember how it was constrained before to uh, the blue lines on either side. We'll show those again. So there, it would have been constrained to the edge of the blue, but the breakout lets it go all the way over into the gutter and all the way over to the edge of the browser. And so that doesn't choke your text quite as much, which could be strategic. Uh, you know, that could be a strategic decision you make in your display, but also it's kind of cool the way it, it just anchors that image to the very right side of the screen here. And so it still provides the visual, your content flow is not very interrupted, but it does get the choke point. So we're achieving a lot of things here. We're making maximal use of space. So the image is as large as possible. So it's still very descriptive, you know, the image itself, but it's also not taking away from the flow of the text. I think this is fascinating. So that's a breakout. And, and there's some additional engineering here to the breakout that we are not seeing because this particular image is not wide enough. However, the breakouts are engineered so that they will only ever take up a maximum of 50% of your content. So you will always have a choke point that where your content remains at least 50% as wide as it is, is, you know, when it's not choked at all. And that's cool because that way you always know you have your choke when you're using a breakout image. You always get your choke, so you get that psychological bump that gets people reading your content and gets them engaged with what you've written. And you also get the benefit of the big image that's squished over to the side of the browser. So this is a really cool display conceit. This is nice. This is a, just a great tool that you have to enhance your sales pages and landing pages with Focus 1.1. Okay, so there's the breakout. Now, a pullout is different because a pullout says you don't want to choke your text at all. So where's the breakout will choke up to 50% of your text. A pullout will not choke your text at all. So we will change this to a pullout and you'll be able to see what the uh, ramifications of this are. The image will actually get smaller. So here's a pullout. A pullout leaves your content width alone, does not choke anything, and just pulls the image out to the side of the content and uses whatever space is still available on the page. And you can actually pull images out to the right or to the left. If you wanted to go left, you could say pull out left. And the same is true for the, um, for the breakouts. But uh, anyway, so we're, we're gonna, so you see here that the pullout has made that image really small. So now this image isn't very descriptive and I'm not sure it would have the same effect on visitors. Like, hey, can you really tell this is a timeline over here? Maybe if you're really accustomed to what you're looking at. But uh, I felt like the big image, uh, specifically the breakout, was more suitable for this particular type of display. All right, so here's my OmniTweet sales page. I'm gonna go in and edit this right now to turn this image into a breakout image to enhance my sales page, all right? Let's do it. So we're gonna edit this thing. And I'm going to click on this image and we're going to use focus content styles to make this a breakout. And then I'm also going to pop it so it'll have uh, that shadow around it for more effect. Okay, let's hit update. Let's see what happens. Here we go. And here it is. Now this image is a breakout on this page. The image stays large. It has visual impact because we can tell what's going on with it. It's a descriptive for what OmniTweet does. And in the meantime, it's also choking this content, so visitors will be more likely to scan, read, whatever. They will continue their trek down the page because the visual interest and the content have held their focus all the way down. All right, so there it is. That's breakout. Uh, your pullout functionality is similar. You just choose a different option inside the focus content styles in the text editor. and. This is a really easy way to enhance your sales pages with descriptive text, uh, like an alert box, something like this, images, videos. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. I'm sure you can come up with tons on your own, but uh, this is a really cool way to describe your product and showcase your product at the same time. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.